Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. God, our Heavenly Father, this blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy.
Church of the Larger Fellowship, a Unitarian Universalist congregation with no geographical boundary, working toward creating a global spiritual community, rooted in profound love, which cultivates wonder, imagination, and the courage to act. Adapting to the COVID-19 pandemic has been difficult for many bricks and mortar congregations. Early on in the pandemic, we were in a unique position to assist many congregations with the transition. 
We hosted special episodes of The View, provided advice and counseling to religious professionals, and trained congregations for live streaming worship, all while providing robust online programming for our members. From worship to covenant groups, from classes to pastoral care, and from our monthly magazine to our letter writing ministry, we have found ways to build connection and community even through the screen. We have been a model for ministry on the margins, providing services for isolated Unitarian Universalists, becoming a spiritual lifeline for our members in prison, and investing in innovative ministry. We know better than anyone how deep and meaningful connections can be formed even from a distance. Unitarian Universalists have faced many challenges in these times, and we continue to persevere and to fight for justice and equity for all people, especially during moments of crisis. We are proud to be a leader in this faith movement, and we invite you to get involved in our ministry. We strive to be a place where anyone from anywhere can find spiritual refuge anytime they need it. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Larger Fellowship. Greetings, and welcome to Christmas Eve with the Church of the Larger Fellowship, a Unitarian Universalist congregation without borders or walls. As a Unitarian Universalist congregation, we gather as a theologically diverse community. We respect many different beliefs and ways of being in this world. We honor who you are exactly the way you are. We welcome different theologies in our congregation and do not mandate a belief in a particular creed or deity. And yet, this is Christmas Eve, a Christian holiday based in a specific and ancient story of the birth of Jesus into a hurting world. We hope that whatever it is you believe about this story, you can find meaning in it tonight. That tonight you can find hope in the birth of a baby meant to be a special person, meant to be, in some people's mind, a savior of humanity, meant to usher in an era of justice and liberation for all people. We hope that in the music and readings that we will present to you, you will find joy, you will find comfort, you will find inspiration, you will find justice, you will find peace, you will find love. We wish you love tonight. We light our chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, to mark this time as sacred. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Glory in 
come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet Thee, born this happy morning, Jesus. When we scale at last the walls which our hardened hearts have built, then we come face to face, finally, with the blessedness of one another. Then we see that these struggling fellow pilgrims with whom we share this space are no longer robbers, pirates, and thieves, but deepest friends, most intimate souls, to see this creation with the eyes of God means seeing with the eyes of peace. It means finding ways to bind up the broken, even when the world says it can't be done. To scale these walls of alienation and despair means living our lives in truth with justice, neither denying the holy gifts of our hearts and souls, nor hoarding them like miser's gold. It is the simplest call of all, in essence, to open ourselves to God. We first must open ourselves to one another. Each day we live in hope, the deepest possibilities of our dreams and of our visions in this life. We dwell as well in heaven. Then it is that we will turn and greet one another, knowing at long last the simple blessing of standing fully in the presence of another true Messiah, face to face with one like us, a beaming, holy child of God. Charge it, he hath this 
The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 23, from the New Revised Standard Version. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they could come together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God, it is with us. Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 18. And in that region were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem 
and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph in the babe, lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known that the saying which had been told to them concerning this child, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds were saying. Let us be still in the darkness of our sacred space and listen to the quiet around us. For even in the quiet, there is a gentle 
being with others. Let us feel the warmth of our community, knowing we are not alone. For in the quiet shadow is the glow of life within all. Let us know in the darkness the gift that each candle bears, a small flame, a diminutive light, yet the wondrous gift to kindle another's glow. Let us be in awe of this moment as we take up each other's flame and as the light envelops you and as the hope for peace and goodwill fill this night, so may it be, so may it be. Let us light candles together in a few moments of quiet contemplation. This is the story of the UU Christmas Mouse. Once, long ago, there was a church, a small UU church. And in this church, there lived a small mouse. This mouse loved his church and how his community worshiped and welcomed everyone and how they worked to make the world better. That folks got fed, how they cared, that folks feel connected. But one December, Mouse noticed that things were different. Oh no, Mouse thought, what's going on? The minister was not in the building and the building was not decorated for Christmas. Not at all. No tree, no greenery. And Mouse went to investigate. Mouse encountered the church admin on the phone with the board of trustees. Oh no, Mouse thought as he heard the admin describing to the board how the minister was sick and they didn't know what programming they were going to be able to offer. Mouse thought, oh no, we can't go without community. We can't go without holiday spirit. What am I going to do? What can I do? I need to do something for sure. And Mouse thought, maybe I can put up the tree. But the tree was way big and Mouse was way small. Oh, um. Then Mouse thought, can I put up the wreath? No, again, I'm just a small mouse. Hmm, Mouse thought as he paced back and forth in the church. Maybe I can make some cookies. No, Mouse thought, I can't do that either. <gasps> I know, I know, I can light the chalice. Mouse thought, I am big enough to light the chalice. I am, I am. So Mouse gathered the oil and every night in the week before Christmas, Mouse would gather the oil and would carry it up onto the table where the chalice sat. And there Mouse would light the chalice and watch it at night, every night so that folks could see the chalice through the window, shining bright and know that they are not alone. <sighs> this made Mouse very tired, but Mouse would hear things moving about 
And on Christmas Eve, Mouse went to his post where he lit his chalice like he had been doing. And there he saw that someone, someone had brought cookies and someone had lit the lights. And there was the community all together, slowly putting up the tree. And then in wonder, Mouse got to see as they lifted a child up to place the star on top of the tree. And Mouse realized one little mouse, one little mouse does not have to do everything by himself to make it. For a church, it is not what you do. Instead, a church is about the community coming together and building love. And we wish you a Merry Christmas from the UU Mouse and all of us at COF. In this night, the stars left their habitual places and kindled wildfire tidings that spread faster than sound. In this night, the shepherds left their posts to rejoice and share the good news with each other. In this night, wise people began a quest for peace to rule the earth. In this night, the animals left their warm burrows and the lion lay down with the lamb. In this night, a babe was born, hope was delivered into the cruel night, and roses fooled the earth and began to bloom in the snow.
I make an act of faith toward all humankind, where doubts would linger and suspicions brood. I make an act of joy toward all sad hearts, where laughter pales and tears abound. I make an act of strength toward feeble things, where life grows dim and death draws near. I make an act of trust toward all life, where fears preside and distrusts keep watch. I make an act of love toward friend and foe, where trust is weak and hate burns bright. I make a deed to God of all my days and look out on life with quiet eyes. And now, beloved, the work of Christmas begins, the work of making hope real in our world, the work of making justice real in our world, the work of bringing joy and comfort to all people in our world. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing our songs and our music. We have some yet to come. Thank you for lighting candles and spending this evening with the Church of the Larger Fellowship. 
we extinguish our chalice, but not the light of love or the spark of the divine that resides in each of us. We keep burning bright the hope that we together can create a more just and fair world. May the new year bring liberation for all people. Blessed be and amen.
Jersey. 